Hey folks, this is Tron Games and welcome to Total War Warhammer 3. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a uh, kind of quick video guide to getting started with Grimgor Ironhide and the green skins or the orcs. And so really when we start talking about Grimgor, uh, you, if you don't have your sound on, you'll love listening to his uh, little quips and things that he's got. Um, but Grimgor starts with kind of a, a, a very interesting position, but we'll go through a few things first. Um, first, the Greenskins have like this really important mechanic that they call Call the Wa, um, which basically you have to build up a certain amount of uh, kind of reputation here. And as you build that up, then eventually you can declare uh, a Wa, and that's by targeting a specific um, kind of settlement or group, you can gain specific faction-wide bonuses. So it's really important to do that. Basically what it does is it creates a secondary army that travels with Grimgor. So basically you get like this double-sized army um, for a few turns uh, until you either conquer the uh, the settlement or you abandon the, the wall and you fail. So it's really good to um, seek out factions that give you good bonuses. Make sure you check out the different um, kind of preview, the, the different effects that will be shown um, when you when you go to do it. But it's a really like powerful mechanic for taking capital cities, um, beating up on places that are stronger than you, that sort of thing. So getting your reputation built up so that you can have that as an option is really good. Um, one thing to be aware of, though, is that the fuller your army is when uh, the Waa is declared, that's how big the additional army will be. So when you declare a Waa, you want your armies to be very full, uh, like 20 out of 20 stacks or as close to it as you can. So one other thing that the uh, Greenskins do is they have this scrap mechanic. So scrap mechanic actually allows you to upgrade specific units. So I have only 30 scrap right now. But you can upgrade um, specific units. You can also spend it on things in the uh, in the tech tree. So right away, take the first tech because it gives us one reputation every turn, and that's what we need to build up to the wa. The stances on on uh, Grimgor's army are really important too. You can use the underway, so it means you can actually jump over mountains in some cases, which is kind of important. You also have the um, stance here that's called Raiden Camp, which is basically like an end camp stance. This is really good because it basically allows you to get a good amount of replenishment even when you're in other areas. And early on, the uh, Greenskins really do struggle with, um, with replenishment. So here I'm just going to attack this guy to start with. And... Often in the early game, I'll fight a lot of battles manually. I'm just going to resolve them for this guide. And here, I'm going to take replenishment because I want to fight again right away. So I want to beat this settlement up. And again, I would probably fight this manually normally, but we're going to do that. And instead of actually taking it, I'm just going to sack it. Because one of the... Um, kind of early things to do with Grimgor is really focus on on kind of leveling up his army and leveling up his black or big boss as well. These guys are really quite strong, especially when you um, do things manually. Um, so it's really good um, in that sense. I like to often, often people take looter or this I actually like to take Raider with Grimgor's army because of the uh, Raiden camp stance. And I'll show you what that looks like just in a second here. So here, do that, and then because we're we we could stay right where we are, or we could try to get back to here. I'm going to actually stay right where we are because we can raid, we can get a little bit of extra money, and we get replenishment right away as well. But I am going to move closer to this direction here just because don't know where their other army is over there. One of the good initial goals for Grimgor is you want to try to secure this province, which is these three cities right here. You start with this one. Um, 
once you've got this initial province, you want to either focus on building up this one here. These two areas tend to be pretty... Uh, honestly, they tend to be pretty difficult to hold right at the beginning because of this faction right here uh, at the Challenge Zone. Um, actually, it's sold by the Ogre Kingdoms right now, but very soon it will be owned by Kolek um, because Kolek is really strong in the early game here. I like don't really get challenged by many of the other factions in this area usually when I play as Grimgor. Kolex faction which is up in this area is is generally the most difficult one. One thing to um, to consider here is I often end up going out over this direction um, purely because this region right here tends to be quite a bit uh, easier to defend and there's quite a few areas up in this direction and over here as well as access to the mountains and then eventually to um, kind of the empire and vampire lands. So I tend to go that direction. I don't like to go this direction because you get a lot of these uninhabitable um, regions which are okay to take but realistically like you don't want to invest any um, money into them until you've actually leveled up your your green areas. So. That's kind of the very beginning of this. Um, I don't tend to like trying to defend these areas either. I find this area a lot easier to defend usually, especially this place, uh, because this is actually kind of a choke point. So it can be uh, you know, pretty good to head out this direction. And also, off the bat, this faction, they're weaker than we are, but they typically get declared war on from quite a few different sides. So. It can be usually a, a decent one to to take off the bat. Um, and yeah, we'll just jump ahead here while we talk about a couple of other pieces. So one of the things that um, the Greenskins faction gets, and especially Grimgore's faction, is that you have this um, ability to recruit um, Black Orc big bosses from pretty much anywhere that has the building for them. and Black Orc big bosses are, are pretty strong, um, especially in the early game. In in Grimgore's kind of initial army, he also has some Black Orcs and a Doom Diver catapult. Those are really, really quite powerful. Um, and so getting, you know, though, or protecting those units when you're fighting is, is generally pretty valuable. Um, We'll do here is we'll take this place again. And you can see these guys are starting to come over. They don't really like that we're uh, causing them problems here. And at this stage, I'm just going to sack this again. And then I'm going to head back over here. So I'm actually going to leave them alone there just so I can train a few more units. Because I want these guys to come over here. I want to I wanna beat up on them a little bit more. In the tech tree, one of the things you want to get really quickly is this Healy Mushrooms because, to be honest, the uh, replenishment for the Greenskins is not great. And there's a couple of other good um, items along this way. You get the uh, Prevention of Casualties from Attrition, which there's a lot of factions in the game that have uh, corruption that causes attrition, so it's good to do that, uh, as well as getting uh, additional campaign movement speed before you get... Um, replenishment rate, so it's good to go there early. Um, and here we've got more points for Grimgore, which is fine. But really, we're all kind of set up here now. One one thing that's likely going to happen, so you can see right away, this is already taken by the Warriors of Chaos. This faction is pr honestly they're they're really brutal in the early game. Um, you can see they're ranked, you know, significantly higher than us. Um, but most of the other factions in this area are not particularly dangerous. Um, like if I check these guys, they're quite, you know, they're, they're relatively similar to where we are. Um, and if we go down to some of these ogre factions that are down here, they're also quite weak. So there are a lot of weak factions in this area. So you can actually go and beat up on them lots. Um, I just find moving around in this area can be quite cumbersome. So I do like to tend to go this direction and set up over here. Um, that's usually just a good way to uh, to start. So one thing here we'll just go through as well is you get increased campaign movement range and you get decreased upkeep for Black Orcs and Biggins for Grimgore. Um, 
it's good to uh, to get those units later on in the game, but early on um, you won't really have access to lots of them. And for Grimgore himself, he gets a lot of um, bonuses for Black Orcs, so it's good to uh, to fill his army with at least a few units of Black Orcs because they're particularly um, strong in his army. And then we'll go to the victory conditions here. So early on, it's really quite funny. The short campaign victory is is pretty um, pretty straightforward. You have just like capturing regions and whatnot. But you might think that the orcs long campaign victory would be to you know eliminate the elves or something like that. But it's actually to just get rid of all of the other orc factions. So um, getting, or, or most of the other orc factions at least. So these will be factions you'll run into. Some of them are a long ways away from where you are. So just as an example, you know, the red fangs are all the way down over here. So quite a long uh, path to get the long campaign victory, but there are enough um, sections just around this area and kind of up over here that, uh, you know, give you a good direction to go if you're looking for the uh, the long or the short campaign victory. Uh, domination is always the same. So we'll bump ahead one more turn here and show off one other little thing that will happen. So one one other thing too, just to um, remember I guess in in this campaign it, it's very important is that you want to try to avoid going to war with really strong factions if you can early on um, and you kind of want to be a bully you want to pick up the the weaker factions in the area pick them pick them off use them to level your lords up that sort of thing um, which can be really really quite useful um, for getting your lord leveled up so we'll fight here again I'm gonna sack this one more time and then we go into this stance and hopefully we can get these guys to come over and, and pick a fight with us. And maybe we'll actually, uh, you know, just we'll take this settlement just for the sake of doing it. Normally I sit here a little bit longer and I, I beat on this settlement a little bit more. But we'll start filling up Grimgore's army. One thing early on, too, that you'll find is a lot of the um, factions that you're kind of introduced to don't really like you, and even the ones that are okay with you are quite a ways away. I tend to use this here as a good barometer as well, so you can see, like, Colex faction is by far the most dangerous faction that's close to us. Everything else, there are some very weak factions over here um, that tend to be... Uh, tend not to be around for very long because either Kolek swallows them up and kills them or uh, or you do so as far as the starting position goes it's not bad um, I tend to avoid going this way I like going this direction because it just gets you closer to those long-term goals um, and the one thing to remember too about the orcs is that they don't have a um, like a corruption effect you uh, you don't have to worry about trying to spread your corruption to uh, to other areas other than that, the um, Grimgore's start is is pretty straightforward. You you kind of want to tend to just defend yourself against Kolek as much as possible, um, and focus more on uh, on just leveling Grimgore up and expanding to the the west away from from Kolek. So if Kolek comes down and he start decides he doesn't like you and he wants the settlement, you just let him come in and and uh, have at it type of thing. So I'm going to fight these guys here. Normally, again, I'd probably fight this manually, but we'll do this. Purely because this is something that can happen with um, with Grimgore's group. So you you won't struggle really for money, especially in the early campaign. But here you have the option to actually confederate these guys. Um, enemy faction leaders killed permanently. So I'm going to choose to form a confederation with them. And then that gives me a few other areas. One of the reasons I do that is it gives me access to this section. Don't like that guy. And really, I've, I've confederated these guys, but I kind of don't care about trying to hold them. 
I know that Kolek is going to come down this direction, and you can actually see here there's more settlements off this direction, but they're all this, you know, kind of chaos wasteland. Um, so this is just like not a super good way for for you to expand. So I tend to go this way and head out over here. Um, fighting with Grimgor is a, um, you know, the more you can fight with them, the better generally. Uh, just a couple of those but he can get a full army pretty quick um, in this and you have the ability to recruit these black or big bosses from anywhere so it's good to uh, to do that um, that's kind of all I got for getting started with Grimgore um, if you like the content feel free to leave a comment like the video subscribe uh, to the channel for more in the future thanks for watching